You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Retro Recollections. This week we're looking at other methods of playing back your favourite games on Commodore 8-bit machines. Now we've already covered in the past the tap we know. Here I have it connected to my Commodore 16. And it's great. It basically replicates the tape drive and if you want to see how that all works there is a video in the archive for the channel um, that takes you through it. And it's dead simple and works exactly like you expect uh, and you can even save to it and everything. Uh, but recently I've picked up, um, I was wanted a disk drive based solution because I, I, ne I never had a disk drive back in the day so I wanted to experience that and two obviously it, you, there are advantages of discs um, the loading times are slightly quicker um, especially if you get like uh, Jiffy DOS or whatever ROMs for your machines I don't have any of that at the moment and also it will run um, not just you know, I don't. It'll run prog files, ND64 files, among other stuff, depending on the solution you pick. Now, there are two main solutions that, that you can get. The first is the SD to IEC, which sort of it doesn't emulate the disk drive as such, but it sort of does a half a half a job sort of thing where it will it will emulate certain aspects of it so but so it's not 100% compatible uh, and the other option was the, um, the the Raspberry Pi hat called the Pi 1541 uh, and as the name suggests that basically replicates the functionality of the 1541 disk drive now when that came out you required a uh, Raspberry Pi 3 to run that um, as well as obviously buying or building the hat yourself now the don't quote me on the prices but the SD to IEC depending on which model you get you can get for around 50 pounds 40 pounds and I think if you get like a bare PCB uh, ready built PCB with all the bits and bobs I think they think they're even under 30 pounds but um, and no you don't require anything other than an SD card they don't require any more hardware obviously with the Pi 1541 you need to have um, you need to have some um, you need to have a Pi um, and originally it was a it was a Raspberry Pi 3 now recently um, there have been some developments and people have ported the kernel of the, the Pi 1541 project and I've got it working on older versions of the Raspberry Pi now this is ideal for a lot of people including me I had a Raspberry Pi 2 lying about which I wasn't really using for much so I started looking at, into ways of getting that working with the uh, Raspberry Pi 2. Now it isn't absolutely clear, you know, I did a lot of research and it wasn't absolutely clear on, on how to get that working, but eventually I found the information uh, and that's, so I'm gonna try and relay that to you. So if anybody else is out there with a spare Raspberry Pi 2, um, then you, this will be ideal. With the Pi 1541, you either get a ready-built one get the components, build it yourself if you have the know-how and you also will need a serial, an IEC serial cable uh, for your Commodore machine because it runs via the serial port and an SD card. The one I, I got here, um, I got um, from eBay, I think it was around £35 and it came with this lovely uh, 3D printed case, it came with the serial cable and it came with an SD card, a 16 gig SD card, and it was already built. So I thought, fantastic. Now, if I had to out, go and fork out for a Raspberry Pi 3, that would cost me another 40 to 50 pounds. So that was a bit cost prohibitive for me at the moment. But because I had the Raspberry Pi 2 lying around, I thought, I'll, I'll take a punt, I'll give it a go, try and get it working. And I've managed to do it, so I will go through that later. But I want to quickly show you a little bit of how this works. Right, so the 15, Pi 1541 is connected up to my Commodore 16 and 
as I said before, I have got the uh, all the correct stuff in here, but I will I will explain that to you at a later point in the video. So I just want to show you how, if you haven't used one of these before. They're basically you, there are different ways you can use it. So it's got a handy built-in um, built-in uh, sort of front end. So for the Commodore 16, the file is called F FB16. So to load that in, we do load FB16, comma 8, because 8 is the disk drive. So it's searching for and it's loading it. Right, and then we just we just run. Right, the picture isn't brilliant because I'm running it through uh, an HDMI adapter so I can get it on the capture card. But um, once I get my retro tink, I'll be sorted. But anyway, so you get this menu come up and then, um, so basically you can then load from here. So for example, I've got a load of files in here. So I've got some, some D64 disk images in there. Uh, and I've got, Something, some f games and demos from plus4world.com. So let's have a look at the games on here. So, for example, Alpha Ray is a great new game for the um, plus4. We'll load that up. So, to load that, you basically you hit enter and then you just navigate to the boot, the prog and click enter, uh, return I should say, not enter, return and it should load right up. We'll have a little blast of this. From the great Cytronic software. Who says you can't get good games on the Plus 4? <laughs> this is really, really good. It's available for a free download also. There's a physical copy that you can be, can be purchased. I'll put a link in the description. So another way you can access this is you can actually, um, you can scroll. You, you can't really see that from there, but I can scroll down to an image on here and I can basically load the image up, a bit like the tap we know. 
I can load the image up and basically then all I need to do is load as a normal disk. I can just load star comma eight and it should load whatever is there. So it's loading, I've put Arkanoid 2 in. So you can do it either way, you can use the, um, it's quite actually quite nice to use the, uh, the front end. And then just run. So there you go. So it's a great little device. So how do we uh, utilize older Raspberry Pis and get this working? Stay tuned. Okay, so you've got your Pi 1541 Raspberry Pi hat and you want to get it working with a Raspberry Pi 2. Right, it doesn't, there's no official support for the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, although technically it does work but they have focused more on the Pi 0 and the Pi 1 here. There's two ways of doing this. You need an SD card uh, formatted to FAT32. You can either download this image here. This is for your kernel and then you have to get all these various bits and pieces separately. Uh, you also, so for example if you're going to do it from here you're going to need to provide um, files for the Raspberry Pi to run it on bare metal and you need to do all, all sorts of other stuff. So what I actually did was, there's another gentleman with a website called Penny, Sa and he's Penny Saver Edition at RetroPCB.com. Now I think he makes these hats himself, uh, but he's also kindly provided the files here. So if you, for example, if you want to use a Pi 2, you can just get this zip file, get all of this, download it, so you've download that as a zip, I've already got it so I'm not going to download it again, and then extract it all like this into your, onto your SD card. So your SD card will end up looking like this one here, which is mine. Right, so the next thing you need to do is you need to f replace the kernel image because the kernel image you get with that one doesn't quite work. It might be specific to his hat, I don't know, but it doesn't, I, I spent ages trying to get it to work and it works, sort of half works, but it doesn't quite work. So, on page 130, of this topic on lemon64.com Commodore 64 I'll put a link to this uh, it's basically a, a topic about the Pi 1541 on page 130 uh, a, another gentleman I'm well I shouldn't assume but majority of geeks doing this are gentlemen or men at least uh, let me find the post. Right, yeah, this post here. Let's zoom in. Again, I will I will put a link in. For those who want to try the Raspberry Pi 2, I have updated my fork with fixes and workarounds. So M. on page 130. I'll put a link in in the description. If you click on this. He's got, you know, it's updated as time recording 12 days ago, a new kernel for the Raspberry Pi 2. Right, so you download that. Right, so inside inside you get the kernel dot image. So I'll copy that to and replace replace the one that is here. Right. Next step is you need to do your config.txt. 
this tells the Raspberry Pi how to boot and basically over you can overclock it from here these are the settings I've put in that should be already there and then basically I've just this is just a matter of exp a bit of research and experimentation and it seems to work with without any stability problems whatsoever so arm frequency 1000, core frequency 500, SD RAM frequency 450, over voltage of 2, force turbo equals 1, boot delay of 1, and temperature limit of 80. If you put that into your config.txt, other files you might want, it comes, that image comes with, as you can see, where is it, here, it comes with that ROM comes with everything you need. It's got all the Raspberry Pi um, things that you need, and it's also got the um, the D one five four one two ROM for the, you know for the fifteen forty one two disk drive. You can get others. I've added a few others on in mine, uh, but it will, should work with that one, no problems. See, I've added. I've, that one for the 1541 and there's the DOS 1541 one there as well and also Jiffy Jiffy DOS ones but you can't use those unless you've got Jiffy DOS in your machine well you can use them but they won't, they won't do you any good right so so if, with your config done you need to change some options in your options for the for the 1541 the Pi 1541 right so this one will depend on the type of hat you've got. If you've got one one of the, the types of hats that needs the a one there, they're the ones that have a like a, a pass through for using other peripherals. The ones usually the ones with two ports. If you haven't, you've probably got one that doesn't use the split IC line, so you need that in there as zero. Um, or you can blank it out, I believe. But if you've got option B or option instead of option A, and you can find out from here it shows you what the different options are so the the pi 15 the official pi 1541 um, web page has information about option b and option a here uh, but it, it typically if you got one with just one one serial port it tends to be option a then you would need to change that to one if you've got one that needs a pass through okay um, this is if you use a composite video out I'm not um, you can specify which ROM you want it to use for the disk drive otherwise it will look for one of these names and do use the first one it comes across I've put that in but I don't think it's actually using that I think it's using that but it works and then obviously you can declare a ROM for the 1581 disk drive if you so wish the charging font is the Commodore 64 font that comes with this and you, it makes the the OLED screen on the the 15 for the, the Pi 1541 look like a Commodore 64 text it doesn't work with anything other than the um, Raspberry Pi 3 at the moment so if you've got a Pi 2 just disable that if you've got a uh, more than one machine you want to use this on then you could do with disabling um, the start file for example if you're only using it on a Commodore 64 if you uncheck this whenever you type in load star comma 8 it'll boot up to the, the Commodore 64 front end file selector menu if you're using it like me on the 64 and the 16 then you need to have that unchecked otherwise you'll be loading up the wrong file and then you have to, like I showed you, manually load the file in. LCD name, you need to check with the type of LCD you've got. Hopefully your, yeah, your hat that you've purchased will tell you which one you've got to set it to. And mine is this one, which is quite a typical one. SSD 1306 underscore 128 times 64. You can change the logo name. I've just left that alone. Uh, what else do you need to check? I'd disable quick boot if it's and all that because the Pi 2 is slower, so I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't have it quick booting. 
you can change the order of the buttons on the side. I've not changed it, it's still on default, so I've left that as it is. Um, this is another thing about the, the charging font. Disable that if you haven't got a Pi 3, because otherwise you might get some rubbish text or blocks of color on the screen instead of text. This one's quite important. Lowercase file name set to one. So browse mode file names. If you don't do that, then you might get some rubbish text as well because Commodore machines tend to have everything in uppercase. And if you have file names upper and lowercase letters in them, uh, it confuses the the Pi 1541. So you're best having that on one. If you've got a rotary dialer on your Pi 1541 hat, then you need to change these settings. I haven't, so I have not touched that. And that's pretty much it. It should work with that. I can supply these two files. I can't supply any ROMs or anything like that because of copyright reasons, but these two text files I can supply uh, as well in the description to get you started, but you might need to tweak them depending on your setup. Your mileage may, may vary. Mine seems to work very stable, especially with the uh, config options that I've set in this one here. These config options seem to work fine for me, so have a play about. It took me about a couple of days to get it working properly, but it's working great. Good luck with it. So hopefully you'll agree that this is a great little solution. Um, like I said, this one I picked up, the hat, the case, the serial cable, and the SD card. I picked up the whole thing for about, I think with postage, about £35. Now, that's, and it works great, you know. Once I figured out how to use it with the Raspberry Pi 2, I've saved myself a bit of money and it works flawlessly. So I hope that was useful. Let me know if there's any questions, if you're struggling to get it working, but if you follow those instructions, I hopefully they were clear enough on where to get those files from and make those alterations to your config and your options files, you should be good to go. And you should be able to use this with every, pretty much every Commodore 8-bit out there. Please don't ask for any ROMs or anything like that. I will give you the links to where I'll, the two um, websites that I, I displayed on there on the on the tutorial and also um, I'll link to this eBay seller because they've done a decent job with this it's a nice little sturdy case with those two websites you should have everything you need to get going right I hope that was enjoyable thanks very much for watching like I said look at the links in the description for all the information there's also links to my my stuff like social media links, how you can support the channel and so and so forth. So again, thanks very much. So until next time, bye bye.